number, especially if inflation goes down, which economists are predicting, although who knows what's going to happen as we've seen again and again, inflation has remained higher than economists are predicting. But that's the hope, at least, that some of that purchasing power will be restored to seniors in 2023. Well, and so many of those Social Security recipients' costs are fixed. Their housing is usually fixed. Uh, how much they spend um, on their utilities and on, on their groceries and things like that. But one thing, to your point, Errol, that really isn't fixed is their medical costs because those... We have exciting news again. The Federal Reserve has reported that inflation is finally beginning to cool down. It means that stimulus money is here and stimulus money is on the way, everybody. So we expect us to receive some stimulus money in the next coming days because of this. In response to economic devastation caused by the crisis, Congress authorized a new round of stimulus payments both this year and last year. As they were sent out in the midst of a global appeal, many Americans gladly accept them with fully understanding the ultimate ramifications. The good news is that Congress sent out the payments with no strings attached. There are a few things that you have to know, and this is it. You won't pay any tax on any of your crisis-related stimulus payments, although the IRS requires Americans to pay tax on any and all sorts of income. The stimulus payments not consider income, so therefore it's free stimulus cash. The stimulus payments were not taxable income because they were actually advanced payments of tax credits. So a tax credit is a dollar for dollar reduction in the amount of your tax liability. Typically you claim a tax credit when you file your taxes and the credit is just used to offset any balance due. And in the case of a refundable tax credit, any excess comes to you in the form of refund. So folks, due to the severity of the crisis, Congress determined that sending stimulus payments to Americans immediately was a better course of action than waiting for them to claim the credit on their tax returns. This provided relief, rapid relief, from the severe economic repercussions of the crisis. If for some reason you didn't receive the stimulus payments directly, you likely can uh, get them when you file a tax return. As the payments are technically tax credits, you can claim them on your return just as you would any other income tax credit, like the earned income tax credit. As with all credits, you could then use the stimulus credits to offset any outstanding tax liability. If you end up claiming your stimulus money when you file your taxes, it's important to remember that it's a refundable credit and you don't have to really worry about anything because the child in the Pinnacle credit is an example of a non-refundable credit. It can't be used for more than what you owe in taxes. And for example, if you claim the $500 child in the Pinnacle credit, but you owe just 100 bucks in taxes, you can only use 100 of your credit to offset your tax liability. It means that you don't really need to have additional assistance of 400 bucks in the form of refund. You'll get the money fast and you get the money quick, probably in your mailbox direct deposit. And with this, your refundable credit, such as the stimulus credit, you're entitled to refund if the amount of your stimulus exceeds your tax liability. So a key measure, folks, of consumer prices slowed somewhat in October. It's another hopeful sign that inflation pressures could be moderating and the personal consumption price index rose 6% in October compared to a year earlier. According to the Commerce Department's resort, that's down from the upwardly revised 6% annual increase reported for September. PCE is the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge since it gives you a more complete picture of consumer prices. Prices rose 0.3% in October compared to September, the same month increase as in each of the previous two months. Inflation, everybody, hear this. Inflation. Pressures have become a major concern for the economy. It prompts the Fed to hike interest rates again at an unprecedented rate in an effort to get the prices under control. Jerome Powell is also saying in a speech that the Fed could pull back on the pace of its aggressive rate hikes. But Powell stressed the importance of not relying on one particular data point. The report shows that big jumps in both personal income and personal spending. Personal income jumped 0.7% in October, up from a 0.4% increase in September. And the main drivers of the increased spending, everybody, was new cars and trucks, furniture and other big ticket items for the home and eating out. So both of these readings could lead to underlying inflation pressures going forward. Greater demand for goods and services can push prices higher, unless there is a corresponding increase in supply to meet demand. So what this means is that the most payments have to be sent out quickly or else people will suffer even longer. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's afternoon. Right? We, we're right now having the defense, the National Defense Authorization Act on the floor, so we're very excited about the fact they're bringing up under suspension. Hope to have a very strong bipartisan bill, but I'll get to that further. But first, I mean, the joy, the pride, the euphoria that we feel today having passed the Respect for Marriage Act 
a landmark decision, landmark law, change in the law uh, for full equality. So it is a, a glorious day here in the House. Now the federal government will never stand in the way of anyone marrying the person you love. This morning was also a moment of personal pride. Sign, th signing this legislation is one of the last bills that I signed in the enrollment ceremony as Speaker of the House. Uh, it was uh, my first speech on the floor when they, I was sworn in and had just a, a moment to speak was about the f I've come here to fight against HIV and AIDS. That was my very first words on the floor of the House. And one of the final bills as speaker the first time around that I signed, December 2010, was the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So now here we are now, and we have the repeal, and we have the uh, Respect for Marriage Act. And what it does, it, um, it repeals certain things. How wonderful is it that on the same day... The federal legislation be renewed every five years. But Senator Scott said he wants to fix and preserve those programs. A bill sponsored by nearly all House Democrats would increase Social Security benefits in various ways and apply the payroll tax for the first time on wages about 400000 and up. But most of the new benefits would be temporary and the increased taxes would only be for an extra four years of insolvency for the trust fund. On Medicare, for instance, an effort by Senate Democrats this summer to boost taxes on some high earners to shore up that program was not successful. The Biden administration is laying out its plan to meet an ambitious goal of ending hunger in the United States by 2030, including expanding monthly benefits to help low-income Americans by also sending food. The administration, in a plan released today, said it's seeking to increase healthy eating and physical activity so that fewer people are afflicted by diabetes and hypertension. Biden wrote in a memo to the White House in a strategy that the consequence of food insecurity and diet-related diseases are significant, far-reaching, and disproportionately impact historically underserved communities. Yet for food insecurity and food diet-related diseases, we prioritize the health of the nation. Uh, we have a responsibility to secure our border. We also have a responsibility to recognize the importance of newcomers to our nation. Right now, the best thing that we can do for our economy is to have comprehensive We need them to pick the crops down here. But that doesn't mean that we don't recognize our moral responsibility as well. When the president, the former, well, 